G'day everyone and welcome to this video breaking down question 11 of the economics exam, external exam for Queensland in 2023. This was purely a theoretical based question. What we're going to do today is we're going to create our little framework to answer this question and breaking into three steps. Step one, know your question, find your cognitive verb, your topic and your targets. Step two, know your theory. So we're going to study for this. Step three is apply your knowledge of the theory to the question as it's presented and stay within the question as it's presented. In the 2023 paper, there were four short response questions worth 29 marks, basically half the paper. The question we're looking at today, explain one way that monetary policy is transmitted through the economy following a rise in interest rates. Our cognitive verb, explain. We've only got to look at one way monetary policy is transmitted, but we're starting to see that we're going to start to look at the, the four channels of the monetary policy transmission. The Australian economy, not focusing on the global position, and importantly, it's a rise in interest rates. This is what we have to really focus on is this rise. So let's think about our cognitive verb. We have to explain we have to know what the transmission mechanism is. Okay, now we're not going to ask you in these questions, you don't necessarily have to write a big piece about, uh, you know, the, the, the fundamental theory behind it. We've got to apply our knowledge to the question. So what we have here is we're looking at a transmission me mechanism. We're seeing a rise in interest rates. So the rise in interest rates is probably caused by inflation being above target. And so they're trying to slow the economy down. Okay, we now see that the we can sort of Think about the what, the cause, the how, and the effects, or the why. So we've got a rise in interest rates. The rise in interest rates is going to work through any of the four channels of monetary policy at different speeds in different ways, and you have to explain one of them, one of those channels. Importantly, whenever the question is explained, if you just take a what, how, why, or a what, cause and effect, you must think about your stakeholders and try and link it back to your big macro objectives in terms of what it might do for inflation, what it might do for unemployment, or what it might do for GDP. In stakeholders, I'd be thinking about households and firms. How will it have an effect? So let's move on. We're going to try and use, apply this and think back through our theory on this section of the four channels of monetary policy transmission. So tick through step one, let's go look at our theory. A lot of you may have seen this little map from the Reserve Bank. I'll put it in the links below. Over on the side here, we can look at the, uh, we can put a little red arrow to say, here's our increase in the cash rate. When we have an increase in the cash rate, we see a change in interest rates. Deposit rates rise, as do lending rates for businesses. Now we've got to think about how this flows through to have an effect on the economy. When interest rates rise, it encourages savings. It encourages, well, the question of what it does for investment, we tend to see that investment drops, doesn't it? Discourage investment, you've got more, uh, more expensive to borrow money. And uh, the cash available to spend, more savings equals less cash available to spend. Now we've only got to look at one transmission channel. So I've got to make this quick. I'm only looking at four marks. I'm going to ignore my asset prices for the moment and I'm going to ignore the exchange rate. I'm not being asked to look through the four channels. I just want to look at these two. Savings is up, cash available to spend is down. Therefore, from a GDP perspective, consumption is down. It's more expensive to borrow money. Therefore, investment, purchasing of capital goods is going to be down as well. Okay, it's going to lead to a fall in domestic prices. And consequently, it's going to drop inflation. So let's now think about this flow. The what? What's going on? Likely, inflation is above target. 2 to 3%. So cash rate increases. And then we've got to think through... Oh, We've got to think through the how. We'll look through this and say, what's our how now? Our how is 
uh, it's going to encourage savings and then that has a flow on effect to consumption and GDP and it's going to have a flow on effect also to inflation now let's think about the effect here for our stakeholders the effect of this increase in savings on firms the effect on firms of increase in saving is a drop in income for the firm drop in revenue for the firm consequently households will also see less work available Funnily enough, this is what's happening in Australia at the moment. We're seeing a, a, a decrease in hours worked. Households see a drop in income. And then we can think about our macro. If this is happening, firms are seeing a drop, households are seeing a drop in income, unemployment is likely to rise and inflation is likely to fall. So we've sort of seen what's going on. How does the flow work? Step two, how does the flow work? and the effects on firms, households, and our macroeconomic objectives. Let's have a look at the marking guide. There's a sample response here. I'm not a super fan of it, but have a read through it anyway. Make your own critical judgment on it. Identifies the transmission mechanism flow. What are you looking at? Okay, so you're looking here at, the, at what we call the cash channel, I guess. That idea, the cash and savings. channel of transmission mechanism. You've talked about the flow from the perspective of uh, increased saving and decrease consumption on firms. You also looked at how that increase in saving and decrease in consumption has affected households. And finally, we've linked it back to the effect on a macroeconomic objective. We could link that through to unemployment, inflation, or GDP. So really, it's about, this is the how, or the cause, maybe. That's not the best word cause, but it works for now. And then this is gonna be the effect. Okay, if we think through that, what, how, or cause, and effect, or why, when for, always for an explain question, linking back through to your macro economic objectives, as it says here, you, you hit four out of four. By giving that, that depth of information and talking through the theoretical outcomes of what's going on. So make sure that you always start with a start with the view that you have to discuss the final outcomes. To finish up, there's our structure. Identify the cognitive verb, which was explained. The topic was monetary policy and the target being a rise in interest rates. And the effects, subsequent effects. So know your theory. So you have to know your transmission mechanism and we have to apply it to the effect where we see that rise in interest rates. to look through to the final step of, uh, of how it's going to affect our stakeholders and our macro objectives. Okay, simple structure for these short response questions. Hope that helps and all the best with your preparation for any upcoming exams. Take it easy.